All right, good evening, Delta Platoon. Uh, this evening, we're gonna be talking about uh, HTML and CSS, so hypertext markup language and cascading style sheets at a fairly high level. So I'm on the curriculum page for Monday, December 5th. So HTML, hypertext markup language, it's just a way, a language, not a traditional programming language, but a way to tell the browser how to display a page that separates the meat from, um, you know, how it's put on the dish or the, you know, the chef's presentation. Uh, and it does that by using tags that uh, basically tell the browser how to render the content. Um, you, If you wanna start a fight on the internet, uh, go on to Reddit and tell them that HTML is a programming language. Um, if you're feeling like a bit of a troll, um, it's it's fairly straightforward, open and closing tags. Uh, the documentation on it is really good because it's the foundation for the internet. Uh, I mean, you could think that it requires memorization or, you know, you got to know where to go to, to look it up. Um, the tricky thing here is, and this is, I want to say, less true than it used to be, is that different browsers uh, display it in different ways. And what that means is, like, if you give a bunch of different painters instructions on how to paint something, right, they're all going to paint it in slightly different ways. Uh, this is less important now since... I don't know, the vast majority of browsers run on the Chromium rendering engine. So Chrome, Brave, uh, Microsoft Edge. Um, and that's like 90% of the browser market share, at least in the US, um, or some huge percentage. A large percentage is also Safari. So there's not as many different rendering engines as there used to be. And, mo and most browsers use the, the Chromium rendering engine, which is Google's open source browser that powers their proprietary Chrome as well as a bunch of other browsers. Okay, so let's, and you all can follow along with this if you would like, but we're gonna play around with HTML a little. Let's go ahead and touch a index HTML file. I'm going to go ahead and open that in VS Code. And I'm just going to close this. Yeah, so that's weird. I don't know why it. I guess because that folder was already open, it didn't override it. But let's go ahead and open our index.html. I'm just going to drag the instructions up. So first thing we're going to do is use something called a tag. So this is an H1 tag which is short for header one. Let's see if I have tags in HTML. So there's a lot of tags. Oh, yeah, there was. Uh, W3Schools has a pretty good reference that tells you, you, know, you can see there's lot, lots of tags, but uh, tells you basically what each of them do. So these are HTML headings. Um, and then you can see H1, this is heading one, heading two, heading three. Basically it renders it at different sizes depending upon the tag that you use. So this is a heading tag, a heading one tag, and we'll just say, welcome to HTML and CSS Delta 2. 
before I open this folder. And then we can open that in our browser by copying the path. Let's go to Chrome. Thanks, Google. Should be able to render it if we just do that. Yep, so you can see this is what H1 looks like. If we're to duplicate this, it's H3. And then refresh our page, we should see it again. And you can see um, what happens implicitly. So these are called uh, H1 and H, H tags are called block elements, which means at the end of the tag, it's going to insert a new line. So it's going to give you a new line between each element of the tag. So the tag are this, so you have your opening tag and then your slash or closing tag. Um, almost every tag has an opening and closing tag. There are some exceptions. Uh, what's between the tags is your content. Um, and then different tags can express content in different ways. So let's try this EM tag. Let's call this contents. Let's see what that does. Fresh, so we see we get this in italics content, and then let's see what's where my list, my W three schools thing go. Did I over overwrite it? I had that list of tags open. We can see what the EM tag does. It's short for element, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so emphasize, sorry, emphasize text in a document. So you can put it in line with other tags. This P is the paragraph tag. It formats something as a paragraph. Basically tells you to emphasize whatever is between the opening and closing tags. So it does not implicitly insert a new line. So if we were to do something like, we wanna emphasize that, you know, we're super excited about HTML and CSS, we could do something like this. Go ahead and re-render this. And you can see it doesn't, it doesn't insert a new line. So the, you have block and you have inline tags. Inline tags are these things like this emphasis tag that don't insert a new line when you use them. So elements can also have uh, ch children. So this is a div and we could put child div. So this H1 tag is a child of the div tag. And the way you'll see this used a fair amount is in styling. So you can, you know, give names to divs and then with your, your CSS define the styling for everything with that name. So which will apply it to the div and everything in the div, but it has no actual effect on the content of the HTML. So this should just look like another new line with child of the div displayed. So div has a child h1, then you know you could have another div inside the div. And then we could say this is an h2, child of the child of the div. And it should have no effect on how this renders. It's more of a code grouping and applying CSS tool to have uh, the children of the div like that. Yeah, so block elements and inline elements, important to understand the difference between those. Another inline element is the attribute tag. And that's why do I keep 
So this defines a, a hyperlink. So if we wanted to put this hyperlink in our code, we could do another paragraph, then do this. So this will put a hyperlink with, this is the hyperlink and this is what'll be rendered. And because it's an attribute tag, let's see what this looks like on our web page. Now, if we click this, we should get a link to W3Schools. Okay. Um, okay, so let's look at some real live web pages uh, and look at some of the tags in there and kind of try to figure out what they do. So let's do this. Go to Hacker News, which will come up again when you do your assignment this evening. Um, and let's look at this. So let's do a right click and I'm going to inspect it. And we can see this is what I'm inspecting. So I'm a new and it's an attribute tag with a href of newest. And then the text displayed is new. And then the same thing. If I want to look at front, you can inspect that. You can see it's this followed by this uh, separator elements. We also have this TD style. We'll talk a little bit more about the style in a minute, but TD, these are these TDs are some definitions of how to define tables in HTML. So the table, so you define a table and you find table rows and you define basically column headers standard data cell in an HTML table. So you have header cells and you have data cells. So the TH, the TH is a header cell and the TD is a data cell. So let's take a look at what this looks like in a web page. Then let's put some, let's put some header cells. Let's see what this looks like on a web page. So you see, it defines a table for us, column one, column two, and then uh, table with a row of headers and then two rows of data. And you can see that it formats the data slightly differently than the headers. Um, but that's what that does. So what else do we have? So something else. Let's look at what this up arrow does. So I'm back in my inspector and we can see it's a div with a class vote arrow with the title of upvote. Um, this ID and a reference tag that uh, tells it to go to news and see if there's anything we don't aren't familiar with. You can define JavaScript, which we'll get to later in the course. Um, you can see you can define some border, cell padding, cell spacing for your table. You can define IDs for pretty much any kind of element, which allows you to apply CSS styling to them. Okay. Okay, so CSS or cascading style sheets. Um, it's called cascading because the last style line of code applied is what is rendered by the browser. So if you say, let's say I, I have a table and I have an ID equals, we'll just say two. And then I define two different styles for two, for, for something with an ID of two. Then the last style that's read by the browser is going to be the one displayed by the browser. That's why it's called uh, cascading style sheets. So think of HTML and CSS. Uh, you're building a building. 
and the architecture and the structure of the building is HTML. And then CSS is all this, all the styling. So the facade, the paint, how the windows look, uh, you know, all of the design elements of the building. So HTML contains and provides the structure and expresses the content and CSS styles the content. So there's a couple ways to do uh, to do styling with uh, CSS. So first way we're going to look at is inline. We can do that by writing a style. So let's say so the syntax for a style is like this, right? So you have your selector which tells you which element you're going to style. Then you have the property, the CSS property, and then the value that you want to style. So I want to style my H1 tags to be red. So So I want to style my um, H1 tags to be red. So do that by saying P, say color red. And you can see it auto populates a lot of colors. So you can give it the explicit name of the color. You can give it, um, I think there's like three number shortcuts or the full hexadecimal for the color. But if we apply this here, we'll just make this our so now this so this h1 everything with the h1 tag should be colored in red so we've got this with an h1 tag we got this with an h1 tag so if i did this right these should all be rendered in red so let's refresh it and you can see they all turned red everything with an h1 tag um, you can also do the similar thing with an external style sheet. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new file. We'll call it styles.css. And then we're going to just take this and move it over there. So this will be whatever was in our, inside our style tag here. And then we just need to link to our external style sheet around style sheets css and then the link equals this just tells us that our styles.css is in the same folder okay so this should do the same thing that that inline style that this inline style did when it was on our page because it's going to look for a style sheet of type text CSS in this file, styles.css. But let's just go ahead and change the change the color. I like my code window back. Change the color so we can prove to ourselves that's true. So let's pick purple. Is purple in there? Okay. Peru. Apparently Peru is orange. Did I see that right? interesting so now these should come up as orange which is probably not a great choice because it's pretty similar but you can see the external style sheet uh, styles the same way as an in inline style the benefit to that is you can have multiple style sheets which uh, build off each other and then are you know applied in whatever order that they're rendered you can keep things organized by doing them in an external style sheet. Um, you can also do um, inline styles. So let's say I want to center this H3 uh, tag. So I can just say style equals text, 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 line. center so 
So this should take it and center this. Welcome to emphasize HTML, CSS, Delta platoon on the page. So this should be centered. You can see the text aligns it in the center. So our selector here is H3. Uh, the property is text align and it's center. So if we're looking at this, selector is in our case was h3 the property was this style or sorry was text align and the value was center we can do something similar by taking this out of here and just telling this that we want all of our text line to be center and this should do the same thing so let's do it with h1 tag just to prove that to ourselves you can see it it centers all of our uh, elements that have h1 tags nope. okay um so let's look at what some CSS looks like on a web page. So if we right click and inspect, or if we use the shortcut, you can also use more tools, uh, developer tools. So option command I will open the same window. And then you can see there's all this stuff, but we have these styles here. And if we mouse over something, will tell us what the style for that typically is. You can see the hierarchy of styles applied. So um, first you got title, dot title A, and you can see this has a dot in front of the title, which we'll talk about in a sec. Um, it's a way of applying precedence to styles, but then you have the table styling. You could tell this table styling, um, it overwrites this one. That's what these uh, line, line outs are telling you. So, um, and then on your own as an exercise, you can try and mess with the CSS in the in the console. Just as an example, let's say I wanted to, where are we? Let's say I wanted to change the color If I could find the color, I would change it. Let's just try to change it in the pattern. You can see that changes the, the amount of spacing around this uh, menu bar at the top if we help to the padding. But you can do that for any of this, any of the styling uh, that's being applied to this web page and the developer tools of whatever your preferred browser is. They should all have developer tools. Um, okay, the last big thing I want to talk about is CSS specificity. So this occurs if you have a div, a class, or an ID, and they have conflicting style guidance. Basically, one set of CSS is telling them to do one thing, one's doing telling them to do another. Um, either the last one's going to be applied or the one with the most weight is going to be applied. So, and you give them weight by 
applying either this to the selector or the uh, greater than less than to the selector, the dot class or the pound. And those all give them different weights, which are cumulative. So if I say everything with a red text as a selector or capital as a selector should have a background color of yellow because each of these have a dot that gives this a combined weight of 0 0.02 because they're additive. So it will apply this um, preferentially to things that have less of a weight. Uh, and the last thing to keep in mind is basically all HTML is CSS and HTML is a is, everything's a box. Everything has this padding, border, margin, position. And that's really what you're styling. Um, some of the boxes try to take up as much space as they can, like block boxes. Some are only as wide as their content. Those are inline boxes. Some boxes sit on top of each other. And those are when you have siblings or inside of each other. If you have a parent-child relationship, like that div relationship we looked at earlier. And you're, you're styling those kinds of things. So let's make a box using just uh, CSS. So let's make a file, we'll call it box.html. Yeah, so we want to apply this to all div elements. We'll say they have a border of six pixels solid. Set so colors blue. Height of our box, 200 pixels. Origin. Our style tag, and then we'll just do a div. It says, oh, you can see. It draws this box around our div elements based on what we told it to do. So if we wanted to make it a wider, so it encompasses all of our text, we could change some of the elements. I want to change the padding, which is the spacing it gives around between the element and the box. Could change that and you can see if we look at the style for this it even defines it down here it tells us what the elements are so this is the size of our box 40 width by 200 height this is the padding and it, you can see as i go through each element it highlights what that actually means in the rendering on the screen and there's a border of six elements and then a margin between that and any other elements of 20 but there's no other elements so that's uh just some basic CSS, how to make a, a box. Um, if you want to be a square, you could just make sure the height and width are the same rectangle. That's how to make a rectangle. You can change the type of the border um, by replacing solid with something else. Uh, you can adjust the margin of the padding. Um, and I think as an exercise, uh, you could make a a circle or an oval. And I think that's part of your exercise for this evening. So what questions do you all have about HTML and CSS?
Would you mind showing um, one more time how you get to inspect um, the Hacker News? Yeah. Um, so if I'm looking at a specific element, I can jump right to it by right clicking and going to inspect. I'm in Chrome. Um, or you can go to the settings menu, more tools, uh, developer tools, or if you're on a Mac, it's option command I will open developer tools. And this gives you the elements. So this is the HTML. This is the CSS. It also gives you a console, which we'll look at a little bit, I think either tomorrow or Thursday. Gives you some data about the network activity, uh, the page sources, all sorts of useful data, performance memory, all those kind of things. So it's either under the menu, more tools, developer tools, or you can look at a specific element where it exists in the hierarchy by right-clicking and inspect, or you can do a command option I. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. Good. So, okay, so let's...